Welcome back this is part 2 of. What if Issei joined the Phoenix family? I have no intention of dragging this intro out any further so. Screenshot proof time. P.S. I hit my foot against the door frame while I was walking to begin editing this. High School PXD. A high school DXD fanfiction by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 5. Pleased to meet you. Scene unknown location. You're here because I find you so much more valuable than some Grimori chick. Riser sat down beside Issei and placed an arm around Issei's shoulder. So, you're the Red Dragon Emperor of Domination, isn't that right? Ravel, who was still hugging the confused Issei Hyodo, looked back up while using one of her hands to wipe away her stray tears. Ooh, so I was saved by a real-life dragon. Ravel started to show a bright smile. Issei looked firstly toward Riser, who was on the side of him. Seeing this very beautiful blonde woman, Staring back at him with what could only be described as stars in her dark blue eyes, made the teen a bit nervous. Breaking eye contact, Issei turned his head toward the front of him while looking down. Seeing Ravel's equally blue eyes with hearts behind them made Issei just as uneasy as looking at her older sister. Drag, drag, dragon. I don't have the slightest clue as to what you're all talking about. Issei lifted his gauntleted arm while proceeding to shake it around frantically. And this thing, what the hell is this? It doesn't come off. Both Ravel and Riser looked back at one another, having puzzled expressions. Deciding that it was no use for now, Issei stopped his attempt at removing the gauntlet. Ravel then stood up while placing both of her hands on Issei's shoulders while showing a bright smile. Don't worry, it's okay, stay here, I'll be right back. Ravel then dashed off into the dimly lit hallway. What, alrighty then. Issei lifted an eyebrow and then turned his attention back onto Riser, who still had her arm over his shoulder. Um, so can I ask you a question, er, Riser? Showing a smirk, Riser slowly nods. Are you really a chick? Issei looked rather serious while asking this question. Wanna find out? Riser winks while using her free arm to pull down her almost button-free button-up shirt, showing some of her extremely large and tan cleavage. Issei's eyes stare exactly where we think he's staring. You, those tig old biddies look pretty real to me, Issei's serious expression regressed into a drooling smile. Wanna know a secret, Red Dragon? Riser shows a carnivorous kind of smile. Riser is so powerful that I can condense it all into a smaller form. Considering that Riser looks more like a boy at that size, I thought it would be fun to pose as a male. I mean, why not? Riser loves the ladies, oh yes I do. Riser, just like Issei, begins to show one of her own lecherous smiles. Clearly, you've got great taste, kid, looking at Riser the way you do. Issei shakes his head rapidly, attempting to break away from his internal fantasies. No, not now, stop it Issei. Riser lifts one of her golden eyebrows. Riser, ma'am, it's really cool that you can do all of that, erm, stuff with shrinking and cross-dressing and all that. Yeah, so, when can I go home? Issei was showing a very nervous expression. Riser's grin turned into a slight frown as her eyes hawkened into Issei's. Home, Issei, is it? Well, Issei, let me be perfectly plain. You are home. Riser tightened her arm around Issei's shoulder while changing her expression back into her usual grin. Besides, you've just arrived. Riser hasn't had a chance to show you around the family mansion, as I said earlier, you're home. For now, you won't be going anywhere, Issei. Okay, this is weird. I'm calling it, you're crazy. Issei protested, ha 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 ha. You amuse Riser, crazy you say, ha 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 ha. Dragon boy, you don't know what crazy is. Now calm down, shrimp. I didn't bring you here to hurt you. I told you before, didn't I? You saved my little sister's life. If anything, my family is indebted to you. Riser loosened her arm on Issei's shoulder indebted well if that's true then why am i here issei folded his arms in protest sekiru Kun. ravel was dashing down the hallways and back into the antechamber with a very bright smile on her face as she was carrying a large and leather-bound book issei found himself brightening up a bit by the sound of ravel's enthusiastic voice hey sekaranya what my name is issei issei hyodo ravel chan not able to help himself the teen also found himself smiling warmly toward the shorter blonde girl, the same girl that should be covered in burns considering the large fire from their past. Oh, don't worry, 
I can explain everything with this. Ravel presented a large and leather-bound book. It had a large title written on the cover, however it was in a language that Issei couldn't read. Ravel sat back down on the other side of Issei while placing the book in his lap. She then turned to a specific section within the book. There were pictures and Issei noticed a black and white drawing of his gauntlet. Looking at his arm at first, Issei turned his attention back onto the book. Riser was also staring at the book with great interest. Well, Mr. Hyodo, my name is Ravel Phoenix and I am a high-class devil. It's a pleasure to meet you, my hero. Ravel holds out her hand while blushing. As Riser tilts her head at the scene, Issei lifts an eyebrow while reaching out and simply shaking her hand. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yup, this has been fun, but I really should get going now. Issei attempted to stand up, however Riser's arm was still wrapped around the teen's shoulder as the taller blonde tightened her hold, keeping the teen in place. What part of, you aren't going anywhere, don't you understand, Issei Hyodo? Riser crossed her legs while pulling Issei's head into her shoulder. You're mine, dragon boy. Now forcefully laying against Riser's shoulder and neck, Issei couldn't do much aside from listen to Ravel read from this strange book. Don't worry, Issei, can I call you Issei? Well, Issei, this book is an heirloom that's been in my family for generations. It's called, Grimoire de Draconis. I've read through it several times because unlike my sister, I am the smart one. Ravel snickered a bit, shut up, brat, want me to stuff you in the dumbwaiter again. Riser was showing an embarrassed grin. Calm down, sis, learn to take a joke. Ravel clears her throat, ahem, as I was saying. So, Issei-kun, tell me, how long have you been a devil? Issei, still laying against Riser, lifts his head as the woman releases her hold. I don't know, maybe 24 hours. It's hard to remember, I sort of died and all. Issei adjusts his sore neck. Ravel looks back at Riser and the two show small frowns. Issei notices the silence and can't help but nervously giggle. Riser stares back toward Issei with hawkish features. How? Issei shrugs his shoulders while making a small frown of his own. Some bitch, pretending to be my girlfriend, she ended up killing me. Turns out she is this thing called a fallen angel. Don't worry though, Sona's queen, Tsubaki, got revenge for me. Ding dong, the bitch is dead. Scratching the back of his head in a nervous manner, Issei notices both girls aren't smiling or laughing at his story. Issei, Ravel spoke softly, sup. Issei lifted an eyebrow, are you okay? Ravel tilts her head while showing a look of deep concern. Um, sure, why wouldn't I be? Issei found himself scratching the back of his head nervously once more. Riser grunts, bullshit, you said you were dating this girl, right? Then she does what? Kills you. If you were going out with her, that suggests that you liked her. Hey, trying to act tough, shrimp. Issei grinds his teeth in. Stares down a surprised looking Riser. Call me, shrimp, again. Riser tilts her head while grinning like a maniac. SHR, shut up, sister, stop being a baka. Ahem, back to the book. Ravel begins to read in a very loud voice. Issei, you have the gauntlet of the Red Dragon Emperor, Yasona already told me. Issei folds his arms again. Well, previous generations of the Sekiryute have done great things. I bet you didn't know that. Also, you get to do this thing called a balance breaker. Ravel turns a page showing a, a strange figure in some kind of armor. I bet you didn't know that either. The smaller Phoenix heiress smiles victoriously. Issei takes hold of the book and brings it closer to his eyes as he squints. Okay. Okay, you're right, Ravel Chan. Issei was impressed by this hand-drawn picture involving a draconic suit of armor. It reminded him of something from one of his favorite anime action flicks. Ravel's smile somehow gets even wider as she nods in satisfaction. Naturally, be thankful for my amazingness. After all, I am a Phoenix. My pedigree is top-notch and my bloodline is practically that of royalty. While staring at the drawing of this new version of what his gear could look like, Issei found himself absentmindedly patting Ravel on her head. Aha, uh -huh, that you most certainly are. Ravel was about to protest as her face began to show a grumpy expression, however she found herself enjoying the praise and began to smile while closing her eyes. Yeah, ah, uh, that's ah, uh, that's right. Don't stop doing that, please. Ravel began to drool just a bit from the corner of her mouth as she looked to be in absolute bliss. 
Issei, still not paying attention, continued to nod while turning the page. Then his jaw dropped. A large and opposing dragon took over two entire pages. He looked amazing, Issei thought. Though this picture was only black and white, Issei could imagine this gigantic and red dragon, flying through the air like something from a fantasy movie. Ravel, are you able to read this writing? I mean, the pictures are cool and all, but... Riser P-H-E-N-E-X. Ravel P-H-E-N-E-X. What's this I hear about you two, allegedly kidnapping Seraphal Leviathan's little sister's pawn? A tall and very beautiful young woman was standing at the entranceway suddenly. She had two pairs of long and drill-like golden hair, which almost touched the ground. She looked like an amalgamation of Riser and Ravel, all put into one woman. Riser stood up immediately as did Ravel. Issei decided that standing might be best, so he did the same while placing the book on the coffee table in front of him. Mother, I can explain. Riser was smiling nervously this time. Issei mouthed the word, mother, while looking at both girls and then back onto Mrs. Phoenix. I was expecting Rias Grimori to be cuddling with you on that love seat. however to my surprise, I see you there, doting over some mere human turned devil boy. How atrocious. The mother of both Phoenix sisters looked absolutely cross. Ravel squealed as her eyes began to water up. Eek, mother, but he is the one that. Ravel was cut off when Lady Phoenix stomped her high-heeled shoe onto the marble floor, making a loud and reverberating sound. Enough, I won't hear of this. You two have gone too far this time. Searzex. Searzex himself called me to complain about your behavior toward his little sister, Riser. Ravel thought hard and then looked toward Issei. Tugging on his shirt, Issei looked down at the little Phoenix heiress as Lady Phoenix continued to reprimand a cowering Riser. Hey, can you please turn around? Please. Ravel showed a look of desperation and Issei understood what she wanted. Nodding, Issei turned around, showing his back. Ravel then pointed toward the scars while clearing. Her throat loudly. Ahem. Mother. Look, it's him. Ravel was now pointing with both of her hands toward the bare back of Issei. Lady Phoenix widened her eyes in shock. Slowly approaching, the mother of the Phoenix sisters continued to quietly stare as she was able to get a better look at what her daughter was so eager to point out. Now standing directly behind Issei, Lady Phoenix took one of her hands and traced the small hand marked shaped burns with her index finger. Turn around, please, Lady Phoenix said in a quiet voice. Issei slowly did as he was asked. Now facing the woman, Issei couldn't help but be impressed. She indeed had a presence of royalty. It wasn't just the golden and expensive dress she was wearing, it was also in her tone and mannerisms. What is your name, Pawn of Citri? Lady Phoenix's angry expression was now one of softness and courtesy. Oh, um, my name is Issei Hiodo, erm, ma'am. Or do I call you, your highness? Hee <laughs> hee. Issei was extremely nervous as this beautiful blonde woman was only an inch away from his face. Lady Phoenix is fine, darling. Well, you look a little worse for wear, my clumsy older daughter didn't rough you up too much now, did she? Lady Phoenix was now giving Riser the evil eye. No, ma'am, it's fine. But now that you're here, Mrs. Lady Phoenix, maybe I might go home now. Issei smiled nervously. Meanwhile, both Riser and Ravel shook their heads no. Yes, I think you may be right, Mr. Hiodo. Thank you for saving my daughter's life and I would love to speak with you again in the near future, but you're right, taking you against your will is just so rude and childish. Lady Phoenix was nodding to herself. Issei immediately calmed down. This woman was clearly a woman of reason. The teen felt that he should have known better. After all, this was a high-class devil and more so, a responsible adult. Issei began to smile brightly. Thank you so much, Mrs. Lady Phoenix. Issei made a short bow. Don't mention it, dearest. Lady Phoenix was now looking back at Riser with another cold stare. Take him home, then come back immediately. You and your sister are grounded. Ravel was about to cry but then remembered the book that was on the coffee table. Mommy, Issei is the Sekiryute. Instantly, Lady Phoenix turned her attention back onto Issei and finally noticed his gauntlet. Is that, Ravel reached for the book and presented it to her mother with the page showing the sacred gear drawing. See, it's true, Issei rubs the back of his head with his gauntlet arm while smiling nervously. Yeah, cool right, so, whenever we're ready to get going, I'm totally down. Riser began to smirk as did Ravel, oddly enough.
Meanwhile, Lady Phoenix was staring Issei down with an unreadable expression. Um, Mrs. Lady Phoenix, is there something on my face? Issei's nervous smile slowly turned into a look of worry as the lady of the house began to show a smirk of her own. High School PXD A High School DXD Fanfiction by Christopher Zazel Chapter 6 You can check out anytime you like but you can never leave. Scene ORC, Old School Building, Kuo Academy All right you two, calm down. I am sure we can resolve all of this peacefully. A tall man wearing an almost medieval suit of armor with multiple layers of shoulder pads was sitting at the large desk. He had long and red hair and almost looked a bit like Rias Grimori. Leaning his chin against his palm, the man got quiet for a moment while looking to be deep in thought. Meanwhile, Sona and Rias were standing on the opposite side of the desk, both of whom showed expressions of anxiety. There was also another person in the room. She was wearing a European-style made outfit. Her eyes and hair were the color of silver. She stood behind the red-haired man and showed a look of indifference. Rias then spoke up with a bit of anger behind her voice. This is completely unacceptable, Oni-san. Riser just shows up out of nowhere, then, then, he fondles me, in front of my peerage. Sona nods. Not to mention, Riser happens to be a she. Such confusing times we live in. The red-haired man now facepalms. Mom and dad ain't gonna like this. Oh well, in a way, this is sort of their fault. Don't worry, Ria Tan, I'll vouch for you. Considering the circumstances, Rias, you're off the hook. Rias smiles suddenly. Well, that's one problem solved. Thank you, Oni-san. Sona twitches her eyebrow. What about is? Uh, Hyodo. What about my pawn? Sona caught herself raising her voice and placed one of her own hands against her mouth. Sorry, Sirzex, didn't Lady Phoenix say that she was going to see to it, regarding the Hyodo boy being returned to his master? The maid then waited for a response while showing little emotion. The now known Sirzex nods. That's what she said, however, I made it a point to withhold any relevant information regarding Issei Hyodo and more so, his sacred gear. Regardless, I can say for certain that the lady did indeed sound very troubled once I told her of the circumstances. I am sure she will return the boy. Sirzex almost choked on his last sentence. Both Rias and Sona glance at each other with uneasy looks. Seen, Phoenix Mansion, Underworld. Issei Hyodo. How about you take a walk with me? Lady Phoenix had her hand held out toward the confused-looking team. Her grin softened into a warm smile. Issei looked at both Riser and Ravel, then back toward Lady Phoenix. Um, are you taking me home? Lady Phoenix paused for a moment to think and then nodded. Sure, Issei, sure. Now, come long. But mother, Riser protested. Mommy, please, Ravel whined. Ignoring her daughters, Lady Phoenix maintained her warm smile, though at closer glance, her eyebrows suggested something other than simple pleasantries. Apprehensively, Issei reached for Lady Phoenix's hand. She then swiftly took hold of the teen's arm and pulled forward. As the teen's focus was in front of him, Lady Phoenix proceeded to look behind her and wink toward Riser and Ravel. Instantly, Ravel brightened up as Riser's grin returned. Moments later, the two were walking down a very large and rustic-looking hallway. Paintings with golden frames decorated the walls. I thought perhaps the atrium would be a good place to speak. How do you take your tea, Issei? Lady Phoenix continued to lead the team down the hallway. Tea, well, I'm Japanese, so I usually just, Issei was cut off in mid-sentence. Of course you are, of course you are. So you're a Japanese human which means you enjoy green tea. Lady Phoenix was nodding at her own statement as she continued to pull Issei along. Um, yeah, that sounds fine, miss. Issei's feeling of concern was growing. Finally, at the end of this unnaturally long hallway, light could be seen. Walking through an archway, Issei was treated to a fantastic view as Lady Phoenix took a moment to allow the team to take it all in. A large and luscious indoor garden stretched for at least a kilometer or more. The ceiling of this enclosure was glass with iron frames. Old-fashioned turn-of-the-century lighting and sprinklers adorned the girders which lined the entire length of the atrium. Once again, Issei was treated to the large and purple sky which was partially obscured by an assortment of vegetation and trees. Oh wow, so this is the atrium, Lady Phoenix. Issei's jaw was agape. 
Turning back and facing him, the lady showed a slightly sour look as she used her free hand to lift Issei's chin while shutting his mouth. Don't be rude, Issei. It's not polite to gawk. Feeling as though he's been scolded, Issei nods. Clearing her throat, Lady Phoenix points toward an area of the garden that had white and wicker style furniture. That is where we shall take our tea, this way please. The lady pulled Issei along. Scene Family Library, Phoenix Mansion. Wow, sister, I didn't know you knew how to read. Ravel was giggling softly, sitting at a large and walnut wood table, Riser was glancing through the grimoire de Draconis. Ignoring her sister, Riser continued to scan through the pages. Several other people were sitting around the large table. Sitting directly next to and across from Ravel were three females. One had black colored hair with brown eyes. Her hairstyle was pulled up into a topknot which gave her an almost samurai look. She was quietly reading, history of European swords throughout the ages. She looked to be really into her book as a small blush peeked over her serious expression. A black-haired female with cloth-like wrappings ending at her shoulders had her attention on Ravel. She was wearing a traditional blue-colored Chinese outfit. This girl could easily be confused as a cosplayer dressed as Chun-Li. She was smiling quietly while she focused on Ravel with her bright and blue eyes. Lastly, a skimpily clad girl was sitting across from Ravel. She was leaning against a pillow while staring off at nothing in particular. Her hair had a dark silver tone to it. A silver and red jeweled headband was visible through the locks of her almost metallic strands. Along with her bright and amber-colored eyes, the woman wore only a dark-colored bra-like top with a white loincloth for her bottom. She was also barefooted aside from her golden anklet. Well, to be honest, what are we gonna do with Issei? Ravel stood up and began to pace the large and old-fashioned library. You said you wanted to trade for him earlier. Well, I think he should be in my peerage. He saved my life after all, so it's only right. Ravel smiled while looking toward the silver-eyed girl with the topknot. Right, Cyrus. Smiling warmly, Cyrus nodded. Indeed, you've talked about your mysterious savior ever since the incident. Saying things such as, Cyrus did her best to impersonate Ravel. Oh, whenever I find him, I will make him marry me. It's not a matter of, if I can find him, rather, it's more like, when I find him. Cyrus began to laugh. Ravel blushes for a moment and then eventually accepts the fact. Well, I don't sound like that, also, I didn't say exactly that either. But nonetheless, Cyrus is right. Technically, I have dibs on Issei. Ravel nods proudly with her hands on her hips. PFF. Riser scoffed while continuing to read through the book with a scowl. Ravel snickered. Well, Riser replies with disinterest. Riser wonders how many pawns the Citri heiress used on him. The skimpily dressed lady with the circlet on her head spoke up. That's a great question actually. I mean, you don't suppose Citri Sama used all eight? Don't be absurd, Sharia, Ravel rolls her eyes at the thought. Well, she has a point there. You said it yourself, he is the Sekirute. Isn't that supposed to be an overpowered sacred gear? So, the woman dressed like Chun-Li lifted an eyebrow. Shuelin is right, so is Sharia, you should listen to your peerage members, Ravel. Riser closed the book and looked back toward her sister while grinning. Ravel smiles a bit nervously as her older sister's blue eyes focus into hers, just as if Riser was the hawk and Ravel was the prey. Hey, why do you look all crazy suddenly, haha. <laughs> Ravel took a step back instinctually. Issei will be joining my peerage. Marriage. Well, let's just say that this Issei kid has tickled my fancy. So, I dunno. Riser was holding her chin in a pondering expression. You like girls though. Ravel stomped her. Foot on the ground as a pair of fiery wings erupted from her upper back. Riser shakes her index finger into the air. Not true. Riser never said that. Let's just say that I haven't found the right guy yet. Well that is until now. Riser grins as wide as ever. Ravel and Riser both stare daggers at one another. Scene, Atrium, Phoenix Mansion. What do you mean, I can't leave? Issei stood up suddenly with a look of shock. Lady Phoenix lost her smile and replaced it with a stern frown. Do not yell. Also, sit down. You nearly spilled your tea. Calm down at once, I demand it. Issei froze in place and then slowly shrank back down into the white wicker chair as it creaked from his body weight. Um, sorry, ma'am. Lady Phoenix nodded approvingly as her warm smile returned. 
Yes, yes, good. I apologize for raising my voice but I simply cannot abide any rude behavior from a future family member. Feeling very confused and a little scared, Issei spoke quietly. Um, Lady Phoenix. Yes, dear, Lady Phoenix slowly sips her black tea. I'm just in high school. I've only been a devil for less than a day and then all of this. I don't even know Riser. What Issei wanted to say was that Riser was much bigger than he was, which made him feel smaller somehow. Lady Phoenix nodded. Yes, well there is always little Ravel. She simply adores you. Not to mention, she is the more refined of my two girls. I love my Riser but she is such a deviant. She's always getting into trouble which increased tenfold the moment she began to have a winning streak in the rating games. But you could have a good influence on her. Issei takes a large gulp of his warm green tea. But what about Sona? Yes, yes, there is the matter of your evil pieces. Actually, that's a good point. It will be rather simple I would imagine. One of two outcomes will happen. The first is that Seraphal's sister trades you willingly to one of my daughters. Lady Phoenix reached for a cucumber sandwich using a silver spatula. Issei felt insulted at that comment and couldn't help himself. There is no way Sona would agree to that. She wouldn't. Issei's eyes were tearing up while he was now scowling. Lady Phoenix smirked. Oh really now? The golden-haired beauty takes a small bite from her sandwich. Issei took a deep breath while softening his features. She wouldn't. Issei then wiped his face with his bare hand as his gauntlet hand flinched its claws in a random fashion. Lady Phoenix stood up and quietly made her way around the wicker table. She then placed a hand on Issei's head and softly caressed his hair. Don't be upset, I can promise that you will not be mistreated, quite the opposite in fact. Bending down, Lady Phoenix proceeded to whisper into Issei's ear. And if you are unhappy with either of my daughters, there is always the widowed lady of the house. Scene, Library, Phoenix Mansion. There is also the fact that you are dealing with Sona Citri. Her house is renowned for their loyalty toward their servants. Cyrus interrupted the sisterly stare off. Riser glances toward the girl with the top knot. Point being, smirking, Cyrus replies. Point being, she won't trade him. Ravel puffs her cheeks out in a slightly cute yet grumpy fashion. Well that's dumb. Great plan, sister. Now what? Riser shrugs her shoulders while grinning deeply. Rating game. High school PXD. Family. A high school DXD fanfiction by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 7. Meet some of the gang. Scene, Phoenix Mansion, Underworld. So, you see, it is what it is. But don't worry my little and precious darling, you will bring great prestige to the house of Phoenix. Also, one little detail that you might find pleasing. Lady Phoenix had both of her hands, softly on each of Issei's shoulders as she stood behind his wicker seat with a seductive grin. Issei leaned back and looked up, meeting the nearly hypnotic gaze of Lady Phoenix while showing an expression of curiosity. Oh yeah, Lady Phoenix nods. As a servant of Sona Citri, you are technically a slave. Did you know that? Issei was about to speak up regarding what he and Sona had spoken regarding her views on the servant and master relationship. However he was cut off once again. Furthermore, do you know what happens when a servant, who relies on evil pieces to survive, marries a high-class devil? Lady Phoenix now places an index finger over Issei's mouth. Let's just say that titles are everything, here in the underworld that is. Consorting yourself to either of my family members makes you a family member by proxy. Therefore, since we are high-class devils, that would mean. Lady Phoenix now pauses and removes her index finger. It's like marrying into a rich family back home. So this high-class thing you're talking about, well, it would fall onto me, erm, if I, Issei was hesitating nervously. Lady Phoenix showed a warm smile. If, if I get married, Issei wanted to run as fast as he could from the situation. And you have three very beautiful choices. Foo 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 foo. Lady Phoenix is ecstatic. Lady Phoenix. A pair of shorter twin girls appeared out of nowhere. They were completely identical with turquoise colored shoulder length hair and deep blue eyes. Each had a half smile on the opposite of each cheek. Ah, Eel and Nell, great timing. I assume you are here to escort our guest. Lady Phoenix had a formal smile. Both girls spoke in tandem, finishing each other's words. Yes, Lady Phoenix Sama. Please, Mr. Hyodo, come with us. Issei looked at both girls suspiciously. Sure, 
They were very cute and seemed to be friendly, however the confused teen could swear there was a hint of malicious intent. Instantly, one of the girls had hold of his bare hand while the other held his gauntlet arm. This way, Mr. Kyoto. Both girls pulled forward as Issei walked between them while looking behind toward Lady Phoenix, who was waving back at him. Um, who are you two? Issei looks toward both girls left and right of him. I am Eel, Han of Ravel Phoenix. The girl on the left spoke in a matter-of-fact tone. I am Nell, Han of Ravel Phoenix. The girl on the right mirrored her twin in the same tone. Oh, wait, you mean, Ravel, Ravel. She has her own soldiers. Issei tilted his head in confusion. Both girls nodded. You are very precious to us, Issei Hiyodo-sama. We are eternally grateful to you for saving our mistress's life. Issei blushes up a bit while nervously smiling. Ah shucks, you girls don't need to say things like that. We see. Well, please, down this hallway. Both girls smiled warmly. Where are you guys taking me? Issei couldn't believe the size of this home. To the baths. Our mistress is waiting along with the rest of the peerage. Both girls spoke in tandem once again while giggling shortly afterwards. He he he. Wait. Issei stopped moving his legs, however the girls continued to pull him along with ease as his feet dragged across the floor. No, no, no. I'm not prepared for this. Issei could feel the blood rushing toward his nostrils just from the simple thought of naked girls and more so, boobs. Boost. Instantly. The twins stopped in their place as Issei's feet planted steadily back onto the solid floor. Both girls looked at each other and then nodded. Pulling even harder, the twins struggled as sweat beads began to form on their foreheads. Issei felt stronger. It felt good, really good. Did the gauntlet just say? Boost, boost. Issei felt another burst of power as the twins finally let go of him. Issei smiled brightly as he held his gauntlet into the air. EHH, so that's it. I just gotta say. The excited teen then looks at both of the twins as they look back at him while shaking their heads no. Issei smirks at the two girls. Boost, boost. Both girls stare at one another and then nod. Issei is now scratching his head in confusion as the two run away and out of sight. Cool, alright then, well. Issei looks down one end of the hallway and then the other. Which way did I come in? Oh well, if I can't find my way through this maze. I could just, Issei effortlessly punched a hole into the thick stone wall. Oh fuck yeah, okay, dragon punch thingy, let's find our way out of this and get back to Sona. Issei was cut off from his thoughts the moment he heard a pair of loud buzzing sounds. They were slowly getting closer. Coming out from a dark corner were the twins again. This time, each girl was wielding a blue colored chainsaw. Now showing grins, both girls revved up their saws and began to charge the now very terrified Issei. Surrender now and come with us peacefully, or we bring you back in pieces. The twins now reveal Issei's suspicions about their malicious intent. Issei looks at his gauntlet. I hope your chainsaw proof. I A M. The gauntlet glowed in colors of emerald and crimson. What? Issei found his arm grasping hold of one of the girl's chainsaws as he blocked the other with the first chainsaw. Eel and Nell were both pulling back while trying to release their weapons as Issei held onto one which kept the other locked together with the first chainsaw. Let go, senpai. Not fair. What in the underworld is going on here? A taller woman with wavy and violet hair and matching eyes suddenly showed up around the corner of the rear hallway. She had both of her arms crossed as she showed a stern expression. Yubeluna. Both twins said in tandem as they released their chainsaws. Issei. Still with both running chainsaws in his one hand, throws them onto the ground and looks toward this purple-haired beauty. She wore a silver headband with an orange jewel in the center as well as a golden neck piece with a blue jewel in the center. Her attire consisted of a corset and dress with a slit revealing a single leg in garters. She then pointed toward the twin girls. You two were never asked to dismember the Sekiryute. Escorting him, yes, cutting him into pieces, no. The now-known Yubeluna now looks toward Issei and turns her stern look into a friendly smile. Well, since those two are acting childish once again, please, follow me. Yubeluna walked up toward the twins and Issei while carefully avoiding the chainsaws on the ground. Issei stood still while confusingly looking at this very beautiful woman with incredibly impressive breasts. Tilting her head, Yubeluna spoke up. Well, Issei Hiodo, are you coming? Let's not wait for the grass to grow. Come along and keep up. 
The violet-haired woman now walked forward and down the hallway. Issei looked at the two twins who now had solemn faces as they stared at their possibly broken chainsaws on the ground. Come on, Yubeluna demanded as she continued to walk. Issei rushed past the two distraught girls and followed closely behind the taller purple-haired woman. Partner, Issei's arm glowed a combination of green and red once again. The fuck, looking down toward his arm, Issei stopped walking. Are you talking to me? Isn't it obvious? I am de drag, the Welsh red dragon of domination, cursed to be stuck in this sacred gear. Oh, you must be the dragon that everyone keeps talking about. Huh, well, that's neat, I guess. Issei didn't seem to be impressed. What are you doing back there? Yubeluna was about several doors past the standing teen as she yelled from behind her. We can talk about this later, brat. Issei's gauntlet stopped glowing. Don't. Make me count to three. Yubeluna was slowly turning around. Issei didn't want to see what would happen if she counted so he ran up to meet her before she turned all the way around. Ah, that's better. Good boy. Here, Yubeluna takes hold of Issei's bare hand and pulls him along with a very tight grip as she grins. Now coming from another side of the very long hallway, a pair of women begin to approach the oncoming Yubeluna and Issei. Both girls had looks of slight anger as their pace began to increase. The first girl had brown eyes and black hair, tied in a topknot with what looked to be old-school night attire. Her forearms and lower legs had black iron plate armor while she brandished a very large sword on her back. The other girl could pass as a cosplay copy of Chun-Li from Street Fighter. Her Chinese-style dress was blue and revealed a great deal of her flawless legs. Her jet black hair was decorated with matching white bonnets. Blue was her color and blue was also the color of her eyes. The night-looking girl spoke first. Where are you taking him? Not that it's any of your business, but he will be seeing Mistress Riser in our private bath tonight. Yubeluna smirked while tightening her grip on Issei's hand. That's not going to happen. The girl dressed like Chun-Li replied in a very serious tone. Pulling Issei behind her, Yubeluna, smirk turned into a grin. Really now, and who's going to stop me? You too. The sounds of chainsaws can be heard once again, this time coming from behind Yubeluna and Issei. Then, the voices of the twins spoke up in unison. Don't you mean, us four? Issei thought about his current situation. Girls are fighting over me. Holy shit, this rules. Issei looked behind him, only to see the pair of twins, both brandishing their blue chainsaws. Both girls had grins of their own, however their attention looked to be on Yubeluna, rather than Issei, this time. Actually, hey, girls are kinda scary. The knight and Chun-Li made a dash for the violet-haired woman, who had materialized a jeweled staff of some sort in her free hand while still holding onto Issei's with her other. Before they could make contact, an explosive blast was generated in between the charging couple and Yubeluna. Blast. Ah. Eek. Both Chun-Li and the night lady were flying forward toward the end of the hallway, only to hit a large cobblestone wall. Crash. Before the twins could make contact with their chainsaws, which were aimed at Yubeluna's staff arm, the violet-haired girl simply made a loud whistle as she continued her grin. Blast. After another explosion from behind Issei, the twins were airborne this time. Oh no. We've failed. Both twins said in unison before they crashed into a large vase. Crash. Clank 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 clank. The golden-colored vase with a strange purple tree growing inside of it, looked to have broken their fall. Eel and Nell are laying on the floor, covered in dirt and broken pottery. Issei looked concerned suddenly as he saw the pair of sleeping twins. What did you do to them? The teen turned his attention back onto the woman holding onto his hand. Are they going to be alright? As her grin turned into a warmer version of a smirk, Yubeluna stared deeply into Issei's brown eyes with her violet ones. Ah, now that is adorable. You are already warming up to our family, so cute. I could just eat you up. Beep beep beep. A small and orange glowing circle appears over Yubeluna's head. What's taking so long? Issei could hear Riser's voice coming from the other side of this strange glowing thing. Yubeluna tightened her grip on the teen's hand once again as her staff dematerialized. I'm sorry, mistress, but your sister attempted to interfere. So far, Cyrus, Shwelin, Eel and Nell have tried to get in my way. But don't worry, I reminded them who's top bitch, he he he. Fine fine, well hurry up, I'm turning into a prune. Oh and Issei, please, don't be shy. 
Wahahaha. The orange and glowing circle disappeared. High School PXD. A High School DXD fanfiction by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 8. Welcome to the Hotel Cali Phoenix. Scene, Phoenix Mansion, Underworld. Come on now, you don't have to pull that hard. I get it, I'm following you. Chill, Issei had a flustered expression as Yubiluna continued to pull the teen along from behind her. Don't get snippety with me now. Otherwise I will have to assume that you like it rough. Do you like it rough, Issei Hyodo? Yubiluna turned her head to make eye contact as she showed a toothy grin. Blushing slightly, Issei found his attention on the cleavage of this woman. Um, realizing what amazing boobs this chick had, Issei used every ounce of strength in order to meet Yubiluna's eyes. Um, no, the violet-eyed woman flinched back as her expression suggested displeasure. What do you mean, no? Realizing that Issei was in some sort of self-conflict as she watched his struggling eyes, Yubiluna grew a smirk. Releasing Issei's wrist, the provocatively dressed and voluptuous woman began to purposely stand on her tiptoes and then drop back onto her heels. This action created a bountiful breast bounce that took Issei's breath away. Blood came bursting from Issei's nostrils as he suddenly fell back first and onto the floor. Crash, Yubeluna was now looking down at a smiling and unconscious Issei. She was about to say something insulting however she found herself blushing ever so slightly. Shaking this preposterous thought from her mind, Yubeluna took a deep breath as she rolled her eyes back in frustration. Slowly, an orange circle of light began to manifest itself around the sleeping body of Issei. Once Yubiluna stepped into the Phoenix crested circle, a large and very bright burst of orange and yellow light enveloped the hallway. Flash, inside Issei's mindscape, standing in a cavernous area surrounded by pillars of fire, Issei stood frozen and naked. Oh shit, I must have died and gone to hell. Fuck me, damn it too, that purple haired chick had some really nice jiggly wigglies, too bad I didn't get any of that cause I woulda. Roar. Issei looked up into the fiery sky only to see a very large and red western style dragon. It looked to be getting larger by the second as it was clearly coming directly for the boy. Jumping to his tiptoes, Issei ran as fast as he could against the rocky floor as the red dragon was ganging up on him. Passing out from looking at cleavage, you are going to be a very weak partner, I can tell. Roar, the naked teen stopped running and turned around suddenly. Instantly the large dragon stopped its engagement the moment Issei began to laugh quite hysterically. This continued on as Issei was pointing at the dragon while continuing to chuckle uncontrollably. The dragon itself looked confused as it hovered into the air for a moment. U.M., can I help you? Ha 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 ha, pff, ha, hey, hem, hem, hem. Issei finally got a hold of himself and looked back up at the very flustered western dragon. Seeing something as huge as you, reprimanding me for something perverted, I dunno, it just sounds unbelievable, hell, I think I've cracked, ha ha ha. But um, hee hee, I'll be honest, hearing you say that, it just reinforced the fact that I'm not dead, again. Issei stopped smiling and looked almost terrified. The dragon softly landed onto the ground not far from the team. The beast itself was very massive and crimson in color. It had sets of multiple horns near the ridge of its neck and head with a single one attached near its nose. It was looking down, toward Issei, who had both of his arms wrapped around themselves as he had a far and distant look in his expression. No, you're not dead, thanks to that Citri devil. Instead, you have been granted the opportunity to become great. I know what's in your heart, I've been with you since the beginning. Issei looks up to meet this creature's yellow golden eyes. Yeah, alright then, so you're the claw thing, right? Issei started to show signs of life once again as he smiled. That, claw thing, is called boosted gear. It allows you to double your strength every 10 seconds. Issei looks to be struggling with this concept only for it to finally sink in. Oh, so that's what that was. Sweet, I am like a superhero. Okay Dedrag, what else can you do? The teen was extremely enthusiastic this time. All in good time, partner. It seems as though you aren't alone right now. Present time, unknown location. Issei's eyes opened only to see a dimly lit and very steamy room. The teen was currently leaned against the end of what looked to be a very large indoor hot spring. A silken pillow with pink ribbons was supporting the laying Issei's head as his eyes scanned the area before sitting upward. This was indeed a hot spring however the surroundings didn't make any sense. 
Instead of rock formations or waterfalls, there were golden-colored bathroom tiles. It was as if King Midas himself had touched this large bathroom, turning everything into different shades of gold. Slowly leaning upward, Issei immediately covered his crotch region and submerged most of his body into the hot and green-colored water. Fit wahahaha, none other than Riser Phoenix herself was pointing and laughing at the bubbles Issei was making as he stayed submerged. Yubeluna, who was leaning into Riser, joined in on the laughing. There were also several other girls in this bath, all joining in on the hilarious efforts of Issei trying to hide himself. Two of the unfamiliar girls were on either side of Issei. Both were wearing nothing, as were the rest of the inhabitants of this large bath, however these two still had matching made caps on their heads. The girl on Issei's right had very warm brown eyes and matching shoulder-length hair. The girl on Issei's left was a blue-eyed and dark brown-haired beauty with a bit of a wave to her hairstyle. Each girl then looked at one another and nodded while smirking. Slowly, both girls submerged themselves only to each take hold of one of Issei's arms while forcing him back up while leaning him against the back of the tub once again. Um, where am I? Issei, still with both girls holding onto him arms, could feel their breasts against his arms as he could also feel a leg or two under the water, holding his lower half in place. You're in Riser's room of course. Riser spoke proudly as she folded her tan arms which caused a glorious display of generous cleavage. Issei looked around this room. Um, you live in a bathroom. Riser falls over and crashes into the water head first. Coughing for a moment, Riser clears her throat while looking embarrassed. Cough, no, moron. Who lives in a bathroom? Clearly this bathroom is attached to Riser's bedroom. The two girls still holding onto Issei giggle a bit. Issei turns his head from left to right. And who are you two? Issei was doing his best to only meet their brown and blue eyes. The warm and brown-eyed girl smiled and replied, I am Marion, Issei Hyodo, please take care of me. She then winked cutely. The blue-eyed and darker-haired girl spoke second. Berent, pleasure to meet you, Issei-kun. Oh, hi, Issei nervously replied. Those two are Riser's pawns, the same pieces that you use. Riser spoke as she pulled Yubeluna in closer. And you've already met my queen, Issei, nods. Yeah, we've met. Yubeluna quietly winks at Issei while grinning. And those three are Riser's bishop, Rook and Knight. Mahai, Isabella and Carlamine, say hello ladies. Riser turned her attention on the three mentioned girls, all of whom were leaning on the other side of the large bath. Greetings, Hyodo Issei, for I am Carlamine. The naked woman speaking had sandy brown hair with a strange white hairdressing that ended in a few strands. Her eyes were the color of forest green as she showed an expression of sheer courtesy. Hey ya, Issei Kun, the name's Isabella, I'm the strong arm of the peerage. If you need help with a tight lid on a jar of pickles then I'm your girl. A woman wearing a half white mask winked toward Issei with her silver eyes. Her neck length hair was warm brown with strands of maroon as she showed off one of her muscles while she flexed her arm. It's so nice to finally meet the red dragon emperor in person. Hello Issei Kun, my name is Mahai and I am a bishop for Lady Riser. Don't you worry about a thing, for you can come to me for whatever reason. This traditional Japanese female had long and black hair however her light brown colored eyes made her stick out from your average girl. She was smiling every so warmly toward the very flustered and embarrassed teen. Hello, ladies. Um, so, Riser, your mom said some things that are kinda crazy if you don't mind me saying so. Issei then looked at the two girls who still had hold of his arms. Ha ha ha. You've only seen the nice side of mom. You have no idea of what that woman is capable of. Riser's smirk turns into a slightly concerned look. Bang bang bang. A loud pounding can be heard on the golden colored and imbued double doors leading into the supposed bedroom from this strange bathroom. Sister, that was a cheap move. If you don't open up, I'm telling mommy. This was clearly the voice of Ravel. Seen Alice's tea party made cafe. What do you mean she said no? Sona looked absolutely furious as she screamed back into a glowing and blue circle that was floating above her head. The said circle began to pulse as the sound of a female voice could be heard. Satan, calm down. It's going to be okay, your big sis is gonna take care of this. I'll get your little boyfriend back from the mean old Phoenixes. Sona shook her head, no, it can't be that easy. We have rules and laws that. The circle pulsed once more. Satan, 
I am the big and scary Leviathan. I won't resort to anything that might cause a war. But that doesn't mean I can't show my teeth a bit. Sona shook her head again. But that's not the point. I happen to know what is, Erm, Hyodo is into. Sona was facepalming. The glowing circle didn't pulse for a moment and then it finally did. What do you mean? What is your pawn into? Sona, who is still facepalming, replies. He's a fan of Milky Spiral. Eek, really? The blue circle was dancing around Sona's head while glowing extra bright. Adjusting her glasses, Sona crashed into her bed on her back. Sister, please, please, I beg you. Don't wear that, but so tan, I am the magical girl, Milky Chan. I can't allow my fan to be captured and not know his beloved savior. Oh no, I will wear my special edition magical girl costume, I am sure he will love it. Don't worry Issei Hyodo, Milky Spiral will save you from the evil clutches of those fiery parakeets. The circle then abruptly disappeared. Panicking, Sona began to shake her head frantically. No, 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 no. This isn't happening. Ah. That's the end of the part one.